in part one, we considered various ways that theists describe the relationship between God and morality. And here we're going to look at briefly some meta-ethical approaches and then feminist ethics. So meta-ethics, you could do meta-ethics in various ways. And I'm just going to talk extremely broadly about three approaches and then more carefully look at one of those three. One approach would be deontic ethics. So we spent a little time in part one talking about the divine command theory. That would be a deontic approach to ethics. Kant's moral system is a deontological system. The idea here, there are rules that you need to follow principles and guidelines that tell you what to do. And then if you don't do those things, you are doing something wrong. Doing those things means you're doing something right. That's a deontological approach or deontic ethics. Another approach we mentioned briefly in part one is a consequentialist approach. You could look more, uh, see more about this on my videos on John Stuart Mill and utilitarianism. This is the idea you're approaching ethics with the view of what are the results of your actions. And you wanna promote the good, obviously, the best results, and then avoid the bad results. So that is an approach one might take. And then finally, there's an eretaic approach or a virtue-based approach to morality. This is the approach of Aristotle and Aquinas. And let's take a little bit more time to think about how this would work for a theist. So a virtue-based ethics, the idea here is that it's, the emphasis is on the person, not on rules, not on results, but the person themselves. So what is it to be the kind of person who would respond with courage, for example, with integrity, with temperance, or self-control. That's what's important, to develop those kinds of virtues and to avoid vices. Such a view then is going to take into account also the motivation of the person acting over the results of the action taken. So moral judgments must consider more than the observable behavior, but think about why the person did something, what was their motivation, what virtue were they acting from, or were they acting on the basis of a vice? And for the theist, this implies not merely doing what God wants, like the divine command theory emphasizes, but instead being the type of person God wants you to be. So several years ago, it was common to wear a bracelet with WWJD, meaning what would Jesus do? The emphasis for a virtue-based ethics would be more directly who is Jesus, and the idea would be to be like him, right? The ultimate example of a virtuous person. So that's virtue-based ethics. We could consider all kinds of details on these other approaches as well, a deontic approach or a consequentialist approach. But I want to just think of briefly uh, feminist ethics and the concern that might be raised with theistic ethics from a feminist perspective. The feminist perspective is critical of the predominantly male perspective on ethical issues in religion, which often devalue then the female perspective. And certainly it's been the case that the moral right, the moral theorists have been predominantly male, uh, obviously scripture being written by males. And so you have this problem of lacking a female perspective when it comes to ethics. So as a result of this, the feminists would claim that the practical needs of actual individuals, um, Nielsen has a list of some of these concerns, just everyday needs, to be loved and accepted and cared for are sometimes overlooked in the traditional religious approaches to ethics. And the concern then is that a respect for women's perspectives and experiences is lacking in the traditional religious 
systems. So that is a um, significant concern that should be taken seriously. Another, uh, a couple more points on feminist ethics. There are powers and forces within religions that have oppressed women and continue to do so. Those should be identified and corrected. And then finally, I'll just mention a tension in feminist ethics. Uh, this, is, this is true for feminism uh, more broadly as well. There's a tension that needs balance between gender equality on the one hand and valuing gender specific perspectives and resources on the other hand. Obviously, both of those are significant values and the feminist wants to encourage or promote both of those, but there does seem to be an, a, a bit of a tension at times and this might mirror racial issues. So in, in the past, segregation has failed to maintain equality, right? That's clearly true. Full integration, however, it can sometimes threaten valuing the specific perspectives and resources of a racial or ethnic group. So the same thing. It's uh, on the one hand, you want gender equality and you have to figure out exactly what that means so that it doesn't just kind of wipe out gender specific perspectives and resources. Now, I'm not at all claiming this is a, an impossible tension. It's just one uh, to handle. It's just one that needs to be kept in mind from a feminist ethics perspective. 